Governor Marcus and I, and I have agreed that monetary policy should be conducted in a consistent and transparent manner within a flexible inflation targeting framework. The role of the bank in maintaining financial stability will also be enhanced. That's the lesson from our global crisis. Improved communication with the public about the role of monetary policy in supporting growth will increase the effectiveness of the bank in achieving its mandate. The governor and I agree that ongoing assessment, discussion, and commentary about our monetary policy by analysts, interested members of the public, and indeed this house, interest groups, and the broader research community is constructive for the emergence of a social consensus in this area over the longer term. Mr. Speaker, we are agreed that we need a stable and competitive real exchange rate, though in today's world, this cannot be translated into a straightforward fixed price of the rand. Government is concerned that at certain times, rapid capital inflows that may be required to sustain investment spending have the unintended consequence of appreciating the currency. We have therefore agreed with the Reserve Bank that we will continue to take steps to counter the volatility of the exchange rate and to lean against the wind, as it is said, during periods of rapid capital inflows, including reserve accumulation and further exchange control reform. Long-term long -term efforts to support the competitiveness of the real exchange rate include lower wage inflation, lower budget deficits, larger reserves, and a more flexible and dynamic economy. Unfortunately, there is no silver bullet in the pursuit of greater competitiveness. Macroeconomic policy, industrial policy, trade and labor market, and logistics infrastructure will all contribute to creating a more productive economy. And this is the multidimensional view that we need to develop as we go forward. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, we have seen very dramatic changes during the past year in response to the global recession. The budget balance has swung from a surplus of 1% of GDP during Minister Manuel's time in 2007-08 to a deficit of 7.3% in just two years. This has cushioned the economy against an even larger decline in output and employment. We have ensured that spending on economic and social services is maintained, as we've informed this House before, despite the decline in tax revenue. This counter-cyclical response has stood South Africa in good stead by limiting the human and economic costs of the recession. Unlike many countries that have entered the crisis with already high levels of debt, we do not have to cut spending or raise taxes, tax rates in the short term at the expense of social development and economic growth. I read that incorrectly. I should have said we have to increase tax rates. <laughs> do, you, do you withdraw your clapping now? <laughs> the cost of borrowing is, however, greater expenditure on interest. Our public debt is expected to rise from 23% of GDP in 2008-9 to about 40% in 2013 and will only stabilize in 2015. Higher government borrowing is only a temporary solution to our economic challenges. But what we want to assure you and the South Africans that are listening and watching us is that government that includes the whole of cabinet is fully behind a policy and approach which ensures that we don't overborrow, we don't overspend, and that we follow a sustainable fiscal path. And that's the assurance we can give you. As the world recovers from the recession, those countries with low levels of debt will be better placed to take advantage of growth opportunities. Those burdened with high debt levels will find it more difficult to invest and trade due to a substantial tax burden, high interest rates and perceived financial risks. To ensure that future growth and public service delivery are not compromised by unchecked rises in interest costs, our medium-term fiscal framework allows for a gra gradual reduction in the budget deficit. The past year has been one of the most challenging periods for revenue collection since 1994. I think the new commissioner is getting soft on this. As a result, as a result of the de deterioration in the South African economy, we now expect to raise 69 billion rands less 
in tax this year than we budgeted originally. Consolidated revenue will be 658 billion in 2009-10, which is 32 billion rands less than in the past fiscal year. And what is the, the cause of this drop in revenue? Firstly, it's value added tax, which will be 22 billion rands less than the February 2009 budget estimate and 5.1% lower than last year. Corporate income tax, secondly, will be 30 billion rands less and over 20% less, one fifth less, than the amount we collected in 2008-9. Thirdly, customs duties will be 6 billion rands below target, personal income tax 4 billion rands lower, and secondary tax on companies 3 billion rands lower. We will continue to face revenue challenges in 2010-11, as tax revenue growth is, li is likely to lag behind the recovery. Given the gap between spending and revenue, alongside efforts to curb spending growth, government requires more tax revenue. I imagine there's lots of you who are going to offer us more tax. The preferred method of achieving higher revenues is through base broadening, closing loopholes, and improving tax compliance. Additional environmental taxes will be explored, both to raise more revenue and to meet environmental objectives. Uh, can, can more of you join Minister Sonjika on this, please? <laughs> Notwithstanding this, we may have to raise taxes in future to fund our public spending commitments. Let me repeat. Notwithstanding this, we may have to raise taxes in future to fund our public spending commitments. <laughs> However, Minister Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the state of the economy and the financial stress of households must be taken into account. We do not propose to raise the overall tax burden this year. We are instead proposing moderate tax relief for households to assist in sustaining the economic recovery. Income tax relief for individuals will amount to, any guesses? <laughs> Income tax relief will amount to 6.5 billion rands, which largely compensates for the effects of inflation. Most of the relief is provided to taxpayers in the lower income brackets. To support further broadening of access to medical scheme membership, the monthly monetary caps for deductible medical scheme contributions are also increased. Taking into account the effect of the tax system on savings and the annual tax-free interest income will be increased from 21,000 to 22,300 for individuals below 65 years of age. And from 30,000 to 32,000 for individuals 65 years and over. 